Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bishop Blanchett Festival of Lessons and Carols. The Festival of Lessons and Carols is a traditional service of scripture and song that dates from the late 19th century. In this service, we listen to nine scripture lessons which recount the fall of mankind, the promise of a Messiah, the Incarnation, and the Great Commission to preach the good news. Each Bible reading is followed by a choral piece that reflects on the lesson's message and a familiar instrumental carol or hymn tune. Together, Bishop Blanchett's vocal and instrumental music programs present this production as a gift to our greater Seattle community in a time of turmoil, social injustice, and strife. The audio and video recordings were created by students themselves from their own homes using a variety of digital platforms, including Soundtrap, a cloud-based digital audio workstation. We are very proud to present the Bishop Blanchett Festival of Lessons and Carols. May the words and music shared in this program bring hope, peace, and joy this holiday season. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let us pray. Dear Lord, our world is angry, worried, burdened, frustrated, and stressed. Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. As we meditate on your words of the salvific story and the music that invites us into your entrance in the world, stir up in us your good news and root your peace deep in the soil of our hearts. Never let us forget your promise to us that you came as a tiny child to save us from our sinful condition and to give us eternal life in joyful relationship with each other and with you. May our performance today inspire us to live as brothers and sisters, children of the same Father. May we be filled with the unity of Adam and Eve, the confidence of the Israelites, the wonder of Mary, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the innocence of the Christ child. Amen. Now the snake was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He asked the woman, Did God really say you shall not eat from any of the fruit of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the snake, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, or else you will die. But the snake said to the woman, You certainly will not die. God knows well that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods who know good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eyes, and the tree was desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves." When they heard the sound of the Lord God walking about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord then called to the man and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then God asked him, Who told you that you were naked? 
Have you eaten from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat? The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, What is this you have done? The woman answered, The snake tricked me, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all the animals, tame or wild. On your belly you shall crawl, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head, while you will strike at their heel.
Days are coming, oracle of the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous branch for David. As a king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name to be given him, the Lord our justice. Therefore, the days are coming, oracle of the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north. And from all lands to which I banished them, they shall again live on their own soil.
But a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide fairly for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then... The wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall graze together, their young shall lie down. The lion shall eat hay like the ox, the baby shall play by the viper's den. And the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. They shall not harm or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the peoples. Him the nations will seek out. His dwellings shall be glorious. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who lived in a land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, as they exult when dividing the spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him 
Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. Upon David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, 
Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled by the that what was said, and pondered a, pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relation with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore a child will be born and will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And, in, and this is the sixth month for, for her who has called barren, for nothing will be impossible to God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now, there were shepherds in the region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy and that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Messiah and Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising and praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go then to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them.
When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all the Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found them, bring me word and that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him, and without him nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwellings among us. And we saw his glory, the glory of the father's only son, full of grace and truth. disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. afternoon to our brave community of students, faculty, staff, families, and friends. It's Mr. DeSapio coming to you here with just a word of thanks and a, a final blessing to conclude this experience. First to our student performers in our choirs and in our bands. Uh, it's just so wonderful that you share your talents with us here. I appreciate all that you've done to put this together remotely all the practice that you've done in your bedrooms, in your basements, in your bathrooms, wherever, and uh, all the creativity and, and passion you put into uh, this performance today. Thank you for that. And to Ms. Cummings uh, and Mr. Van Dynan and our entire performing arts department and all our adults who work so hard to uh, bring the gift of music and put the, uh, the talents of our students on display. Um, thank you for your work. 
And really, this whole time together this afternoon has been an experience of prayer where we get to connect to the divine narrative, the the story of Christ and, and how we're linked to that and how we're always connected to the unconditional love of God. And so that was a nice reminder for us this this afternoon. And so with that, we'll just conclude with a a simple blessing, uh, a blessing that we're familiar with. And so let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Have a happy Advent and a safe and merry Christmas. God bless.